So section 4.3 is titled elasticity or possibly price elasticity. I'll use the words elasticity and price elasticity interchangeably. And elasticity is a number that measures how sensitive demand is to a for a product for a change in its price. So, you know, when it, if I do a price increase, is demand going to be affected a lot or is it not going to be affected that much? This is elasticity tells me how the demand for a product it will change relative to a price increase at certain price points. And for a specific product, its demand could either be considered elastic or its demand can be considered inelastic. Demand for a specific product at a specific price is considered elastic if a small change in price will produce a significant change in demand. For instance, demand for pop or soda is fairly elastic. I wrote many consumers, but not all, will purchase whatever soda is on sale during a given week. So during a week that you know, Fry's has a sale on Pepsi, but not on Coke, Fry's is probably going to sell more Pepsi than usual and maybe a little bit less Coke than usual because some of the people that are just there to buy soda are going to buy the Pepsi because it's on sale. Of course, that's not the case for everybody. I mean, my sister-in-law would only ever buy Coke even if Pepsi was free. She wouldn't take it. But generally, um, demand for soda at a grocery store especially is probably fairly elastic, meaning a small change in price is going to produce a relatively large change in demand. On the other hand, some demand can be considered inelastic, and demand is considered inelastic if a small change in price doesn't produce a significant change in demand. Today's a, a day in June in Phoenix, and it's going to be 113, um, and my demand for electricity is fairly inelastic. Um, I say electricity is an example of a product with inelastic demand because if the cost of the electricity goes up a few cents per kilowatt hour, um, most consumers aren't likely to adjust their thermostats or do something to conserve electricity. You know, the fact that it's going to be 113 degrees today, if I get an email from EPS, APS saying that they're raising the price of the electricity today, I'm not going to adjust my thermostat or shut off a ceiling fan. I'm not going to do anything to conserve electricity more than I already do based on a small change in price. So electricity generally has a fairly inelastic um, demand because small changes in price don't produce much change in demand. So elasticity is just a measure of how the product's price, how the, how demand change changes based on price changes. If there's a relatively large increase change in demand relative to a change in price, demand is elastic. If the change in demand relative to a small price increase is small, then we say demand is inelastic. And we'll get more specific as to how something is considered elastic and inelastic and to determine how demand changes as we get into the section. As we go through the section, we're going to need um, a couple formulas. Every problem that we do in section 4.3 is a word problem. And we're going to need two formulas to do each and every problem. The first formula that we're going to need to do any of the problems is the price demand function. And we've worked with price demand functions in chapter two and chapter three, so it's not a new concept. The price demand function, it's a formula that compares the price of a product to the demand of a product. And it's going to be, you know, given in each question. And it's going to change from problem to problem because it's specific to a specific product. In this section, the price demand functions that we're going to given, be given are going to look like this. To the left of an equal sign, there's going to be a D in a parenthesis of P. D stands for demand, P stands for price, and then something off to the right of it, you know, might be like, you know, 10P plus 4. And how the function would work is if you give me a dollar amount for the price, I can tell you how many units of the product will be demanded. For instance, if you gave me a price of $2 for this price demand function, I can plug in $2 for P and go 10 times 2 is 20 plus 4 is 24. I would say at a price of $2, 24 units of this product will be demanded. So the price demand functions are going to be given in this form where if you give me a value for P, I can give you the amount of that product that will be demanded. 
So that's one formula that we're going to need. It's going to be given in every problem. It's not going to be the same in every problem. This side's going to be the same in every problem, but the right side's going to be um, tailored to the specific problem. The second formula that we're going to need is the formula that is the price elasticity formula, and it's a constant. It's going to be given in every problem. And this says the price elasticity equals negative P times the derivative of the price demand function divided by the price demand function. And we're going to use this, and it's going to be a constant. Of course, it changes a bit because the price demand function changes from problem to problem. So those are the two formulas that we're going to need. We're going to crunch some numbers to figure out if demand for a product is e inelastic or elastic. And when we crunch a number for demand for price e elasticity, if the number that we get out is a number less than one, then demand for that product is relatively inelastic. So if I was doing demand for the APS electricity at a specific price, um, I'd probably get a number less than one because demand for electricity is generally inelastic. But if I was doing a demand for you know soda at Fry's, um, I'd like to get a number bigger than one because demand for soda is generally relatively elastic. And re relatively rare, you can have perfect unit elasticity, which essentially means for every percent increase in price, you get that same percent decrease in demand. So a 10% increase in price would produce a 10% decrease in demand. A 20% increase in price would produce a 20% decrease in demand. So um, I'll keep this handy because we might need this when we get into the section. I don't need to keep this handy because this formula is given in every problem. I don't need to keep this handy because the, the price demand function is given in every problem. But this I might need handy. So I'm going to start and just jump into some doing some problems. And um, I just raised out a, a, a straight parenthesis that was here. So and I don't want to do problem four first. I don't know why problem four was on top of my pile, but it was. So I'm going to start off doing problem two. And after I do problem two, you might be able to do every single problem in the section. But then again, maybe you'll need you know some coaxing to get through the rest of the problem. So I have a problem that's just like every problem you have to do. There's six problems in this section, three evens and three odds. I'll do all three evens. After I do the first even, you might be able to do everything. but if not, you can watch me. Every time I do an even problem, you can do the odd problem that's preceding it. So when I do problem two, you should be do, able to do problem one. So as I read through this question, I'm given a, a suppose that a price demand function for a certain e-cigarette is given by the demand based on the price as negative 0.375p plus 7.87. P in this formula is the price in dollars of the cigarette and D of P is the number of cigarettes that will be demanded at that price. Each of the functions for the word problems in section 4.3 are as simple as I can make them, and they might not really work in the real world. Uh, in the real world, functions get a lot nastier, but then the calculus gets a little bit ridiculous. So I, so I tried to keep the functions at a level that we can do the problems and kind of make sense of them, more so than use these you know, for whatever companies making e-cigarettes these days. So part A says compute the price elasticity function. Well, in order to do the price elasticity function, I need the derivative of the price demand function. So I'm going to take my price demand function and find its derivative real quickly. The price demand function that I was given was negative 0.375p plus 7.87 super easy derivative. I'm just going to use the general power rule. The derivative of the first piece is just negative 0.375 and the derivative of 787 is 0. So now I have the price demand function and the derivative of the price demand function. I can find the price elasticity function using the formula. So now I'm going to write E of P, which is my price elasticity function. Create a fraction because the formula has a fraction. The first thing that goes in the numerator is negative p. And then a time sign. I'm going to put a parenthesis instead of a time sign. And inside that parenthesis, or after the time sign, if you use a time sign, the derivative of the price demand function, the derivative of my price demand function is right up here. 
So that's the numerator. I haven't simplified it yet. I will in a second. And then in the denominator, it's just the price demand function, which I was given. And this doesn't simplify much. In the numerator, this is really negative 1p times negative 0 0.375. And the negative times a negative will give me a positive. And I could write the p second. So it's going to be 0 0.375p over negative 0 0.375p plus 7.87. It's illegal to cancel the 375p's. In fact, this fraction doesn't reduce. And that's going to be my answer to part A. So this is the price elasticity function. So for the price elasticity function for this cigarette is 0 0.375p over negative 0 0.375p plus 7.87. Okay, then I'm done with the grunge. Everything else is just using the price, to, uh, price elasticity function. So first, compute e of 5. Well, to do e of 5, I just go to the function that I just created and plug 5 in for p. So I'm going to go 0 0.375 times 5 over negative 0 0.375 times 5 plus 7.87. When I go to do this on my calculator, I'm going to have to put the entire denominator in a parentheses. So in the denominator, I'm going to wind up having four parentheses, two for the multiplying by five, two for the dividing, putting the whole denominator in a fraction. So when I go to do this on my calculator, I'm going to go clear, 0 0.375 parentheses, five for the numerator, and then divide it by, and then that orange parentheses, negative 0 0.375 times five plus 7.87 in the other orange parentheses, and I get 0.312. So my answer for this, e of 5, equals point, I should say round, because I'm not going to write all those decimals. I'm going to round to two decimals. So somewhere in, in this section, I should say, round all your answers to two decimals, because I'm not going to carry more than two decimals. All right, done with part B, moving on to part C. At a price of $5, is demand relatively elastic or inelastic? Well, my EFP, my EF5 came out to 0.31, which is less than 1, which means at a price of $5, demand is relatively inelastic. I'm just going to write inelastic for this. So done with that part. On to the last part. How much would the demand change if the price of the cigarettes were raised by 20%? easy enough to do. To figure out the answer to this question, we multiply the price elasticity number at that dollar amount times the percent as a decimal. So the initial price was $5. If we raise the price a dollar, which is a 20% increase to $6, how is demand going to change? Well, we just simply do that. So the demand change is going to be just the multiplications of two numbers. So the demand change is going to be the price change, the percent price change as a decimal, 20% as a decimal is 0.2 or 0.20 times the price elasticity number at that price. And that's going to give me a decimal that I'm going to change to a percent. So now I'm going to go 0.20 times 0.31, and I get 0 0.62 as a decimal. If I could do that, 0 0.062 as a decimal. I'm going to move the decimal over twice and get 6.2%. And this tells me a 20% price increase will cause demand to drop, because always a price increase causes demand to drop. And the percent that it causes the, the demand to drop is that, as, that decimal as a percent and 0 0.062 as a percent is 6.2 percent. And that means that's relatively inelastic because a 20 percent price increase only causes a 6 percent demand decrease. If demand was elastic, then a 20 percent in price increase would cause more than a 20 percent demand decrease.
So that's problem one. You're going to do uh, problem two. You're going to do exactly the same thing for problem one. Part A, you're going to get the price elasticity function. In the numerator, you take negative P times the derivative of the price demand function. The denominator, you have the price demand function. Part B, you're going to plug a number in for P, get a result. If that result is bigger than one, the demand is elastic. If the number is less than one, the demand is inelastic. And then you're going to see how a percent in increase in price is going to change the demand by multiplying the percent price increase as a decimal times the number that you get from the price elasticity computation and that will tell you what this percent increase will do in terms of demand dropping. Alright, so there's your problem one. It's just like my problem where in it I give you the price demand function and this is for a company making t-shirts and if you give me a dollar amount for the t-shirts I can tell you how many t-shirts are going to be sold at that price so you first have to do the price demand function which means you need the derivative of the the price demand function in the numerator and you just go through the computations so you can pause the video and do that and you might be able to do the whole section if you can't do the whole section if you can't do problem three because it's a little bit different I'll do problem four and then after I do problem four, you'll be able to do problem three. If you think you can, you could just fast forward through my work for problem four and do problem three without watching me. So for problem four, a company's making fit bracelets and the price demand function is given by the demand at the price P is 20 times four minus P to the one half power, where the DFP is the demand and P at a, at a certain point it's the number of fit bracelets sold at price P. Part A, compute the price elasticity function. Well, the price elasticity function in the denominator needs the demand function. This demand, price demand function, I don't like the parentheses in there, and I'm going to get rid of it. It's going to make it easier to do my derivative. It's going to make everything easier. So this is not the derivative. This is just rewriting the price demand function to make it easier to work with. So I just multiplied 20 times 4 and 20 times p to the 1 half. So I get 80 minus 20p to the 1 half. I'm going to need the derivative of this function. So the derivative of this is easy. The derivative of 80 is 0. And then I'm going to go minus and then 1 half times 20. And I'm going to lower the exponent by 1. So 1 half minus 2 halves. So I just put this 1 half, multiplied it by the negative 20, put the negative first because I'm allowed to move that around. That's going to give me the derivative of the price demand function. Negative 1 half times 20 is negative 10. And the exponent comes out to be negative 1 half. For one of the rare times, I'm going to leave that negative exponent. It turns out leaving that negative exponent isn't going to make things worse when I do the EFP, the price elasticity function. So now that I have both my original price demand function and the derivative of my price demand function, I can find the price elasticity function. I do that by forming a fraction. The first thing I get in the numerator is a negative P. And then instead of a time sign, I put a parenthesis. Inside the parentheses, I put the derivative of the price demand function, which is negative 10 P to the negative 1 half. And in the denominator for my price elasticity, I put the price demand function. And again, I think this version of the function is going to be easier than the one that was given with the parentheses. Although I could live with the one with the parentheses, I think this one is easier. I'm going to simplify the numerator. In the numerator, this is really negative 1p to the 2 halves power. That's going to make it easier to simplify the numerator. So in the numerator, I'm going to multiply negative 1 times negative 10 and get a positive 10. And I'm going to add the exponents on the p's. So I'm going to get p to the 2 halves. It's actually going to be subtracting because they have opposite signs. So it's p to the 2 halves minus 1 half. And that's going to give me 10p to the 1 half. And in the denominator, I'm going to have 80 minus 20p to the 1 half. I'm going to change the p to the 1 halves to square roots of p's. So I'm going to get e of p is 10 times the square root of p over 80 minus 20 square root of p and that's going to write for my price elasticity function so I'm going to call this the answer to part a so my answer to part a 
my price elasticity function E of P is going to be 10 square root of P over 80 minus 20 times the square root of P. That's probably the nicest form of this function to answer questions. All right, so now I'm done with part A. I'm on to the easy part. Do E of 15. E of 15 is going to be what I get when I plug 15 into my answer that I just got. So it's going to be 10 square root of 15 over 80 minus 20 times the square root of 15. And I'm going to need a boatload of parentheses. The denominator is going to wind up having four parentheses. You'll need a parentheses for the whole denominator and the 15 also needs to be in a parentheses. The numerator is going to wind up having two parentheses itself because the 15 my calculator forces to be in a parentheses. So now I'm just going to do this on my calculator because I couldn't do it without. I'm going to round to two decimals even though the instructions currently don't say round to two decimals. I'm going to change that real quickly. And I get 15.24 for my answer to or 15.25 if I round that properly because it's 0.245. I should round the 4 to 5. So for each of the, your answers in this section, I'm going to round all of these to two decimals just to make it consistent. Now I go to answer part C. I'm done with part B. E of 15 equals 15.25. At a price of $15, is demand relatively elastic or inelastic? Well, if EFP comes out to be greater than 1, it's relatively elastic. There's nothing more to write there than the word elastic. Now I'll move on to the last part. If How much would demand change if the price of the fit braces was raised by 10%? To do that, the change in demand is just the percent price change as a decimal. So this 10%, I'm going to make 0 0.10. That's the decimal version of 10% times the price out like elasticity number at that price range at the starting price range. The starting price range was $15. We raised a 10% or $1.50 to $16.50. And when I multiply those, that's going to give me a number. So 0 .10, whoa, 0.10 times 15.25. That's 1.525. Demand is very inelastic, very elastic because the demand's going to drop tremendously. I'm going to move the decimal over 2 to 152.5. And this says a 10% price increase will cause a huge drop in demand. Will cause demand to drop 152.5%. I don't know if demand really could even drop more than 100%. I think if demand drops 100%, you're not having any demand left. But nevertheless, with the simplified functions that I created in this, this is, this is the result and how we need to interpret it. So always we take the percent increase in price as a decimal times the price elasticity at that dollar amount. And that's that's going to give me a decimal that we're going to change to a percent and that will tell me how a price increase will impact demand. So now you should be able to do problem three. These are completely made up numbers. Um, talks about uh, the shuttle that goes from AS, ASU Maine to ASU West. I don't know if it costs $4 to take that shuttle. I haven't taken that shuttle since the 90s. But anyways, here's your version of my problem four. You're given a price demand function. Basically, if you tell me you know, what they're going to do to the price of the shuttle, I can tell you what happens, how many people are going to ride the shuttle, and just go through and do the problem. All right, so we have just a couple problems left. We have problem five and six left. I'm going to do problem six, and you'll get to do problem five afterwards. Oh, heck. Yours is easy. Let me flash problem five up here so you might be able to do problem five without watching my problem six because it's an easy, easy function. Um, if you can't, I'll do problem six, but my problem six is harder than yours. 
In fact, I'm making a vote. We're 25 minutes into this video. I don't think you need to see me do problem six. I'm going to go ahead and work through your problem five um, just so you can have it just in case you couldn't do it. So, and I won't do problem six. So problem five starts off with a company that sells ice cream cones and we have a demand function. So if you tell me the price of the ice cream cone, I can tell you how many cones are demanded. Part A, produce a price elasticity function. Well, I have a demand function. Demand is 50 minus 2P. I need the derivative of that function. The derivative of 50 is 0. The derivative of minus 2P is minus P, minus 2. So now I can come up with a price elasticity function. So I'm doing problem 5 as opposed to problem 6. My price elasticity function in the numerator has a negative P. In the denominator has the derivative of the price demand function, which is minus 2. And then the denominator has the price demand function, how it was given. In the numerator, I'm going to multiply the two negatives and get a positive. And I'm going to leave the denominator just how it was given to me. That's a good enough version of this. So my answer to part A is EFP equals 2P over 50 minus 2P. You could factor out a 2 and clean this function up a little bit, but I'm not going to, just because I'm just trying to do this quickly. To do EF4, I'm going to go 2 times 4 over 50 minus 2 times 4 on my calculator with a bunch of parentheses. So clear 2 parentheses 4 divided by parentheses 50 minus 2 parentheses 4 parentheses and I get 0.19. That's relatively inelastic because it's such a small number, it's less than 1. If it's less than 1, it's inelastic. If it's bigger than 1, it's elastic. So at a price of $4, demand is relatively inelastic. Last part, if price was raised by 25%, how much would demand change? The demand change is always the percent price increase as a decimal, 25% as a decimal is 0.25, times the value of the price elasticity at that dollar amount. So I'm going to take 0.25 times 0.19, and I get 0 0.0475. Move the decimal over twice, it's 4.75%. So this is a 25% price increase will cause demand to drop by 4.75%. Again, round everything to two decimals when you get decimals in this section just to keep it easy.